What's up everybody? In this video we're going to talk about the new SRAM RED Explore 13 speed group set that we've seen in Unbound and all over the internet recently and we're just going to analyze it see if we can figure out any new information from this group set. So what we know so far is we know it's 13 speeds. We've counted them. Speeds. The previous Explore group set was 12 speed. Uh, it looks like it's definitely geared towards more like the SRAM transmission T-type style of group set from their mountain bike group set. So you can see here uh, that it is going to have to have a UDH hanger, which we'll talk about here uh, briefly. Uh, it is Axis compatible with all the previous Axis things like the, the shifters, um, blips, things of those nature. We'll talk about that later. The battery compartment, as you can see here, looks very good and protected. This, once again, uh, is borrowed from the mountain bike group set, the T-type group set there. You can see uh, the image down here at the bottom. The battery will go in, slide in this way, and then be clipped in so it's not hanging off the back and more susceptible to being uh, you know, taken off by crashes or anything like that. Uh, it definitely has an XDR you know, free hub, uh, the, like the previous free hub from before. I uh, mentioned here, too, a shadow rear mech. Uh, this shadow is kind of borrowed from Shimano and, and their shadow tech that they've had before. They've had for a long time, actually. But you can tell here that uh, similar to the T-type uh, style ridge rear this is, is hidden a little bit better up under here. Uh, you know, so the if you look at the previous models of the SRAM wide range rear derailleurs, whenever you're down in the smaller teeth down in this location here, the derailleur will be sticking way out here to the side. Basically, uh, can be hit real easily from uh, rocks and tree debris, anything else. So it looks like they have borrowed once again from the T-type uh, style rear derailleur to make it uh, tuck under a little bit more. Uh, once again, UDH hanger, uh, it looks like it's UDH hanger only. So if your frame does not have UDH uh, compatibility, then your frame will not work with this new 13 speed group set. Now, if we look at the cassette, this is really the, the biggest news here is the rear cassette. Because we've seen 13 speeds before from Rotor with their hydraulic group set, also from Campy with their mechanical group set. This will be the first 13 speed electronic group set from the you know big three uh, group set makers. Um, Will Top, they have a, a rear derailleur that can clear up to like a 14 speed, they claim. Uh, I've done a hack before with a 14 speed cassette using the Archer rear derailleur system, uh, D1X. You can check out that video if you want to. But this is the first kind of mainstream electronic 13 speed group set and the big thing that we want to see here is what is the what is the gear ratio um that was one of the the things i did not like about the 12 speed explorer group set um and i made a video that, about that before but if you look down here at the bottom right you can see i have the gears set up now this is not official okay this 13 speed explorer group set uh spacing here this is my estimate of what it's probably going to be like just looking at this these teeth here i think it's going to go a 10 11 12 13 and then it's going to jump you can see kind of a big jump here to the 15. that's the same as the 10 36 12 speed cassette that they already have uh, which is the wide cassette it goes 10 11 12 13 then 15. so i believe they're borrowing from that setup there so what is really good about this is if you're at high speeds like if you want this group set for road riding you want some smaller jumps at the higher speeds this is what's going to help with this and i actually said it in my previous video if they come up with a 13 speed system that have closer gear range i'm going to get it so i'm probably going to get this group set <laughs> uh, the other thing that you can see here that they changed is I believe they've kept everything else the same, and then they've jumped from a 44 tooth, they've, they've, they're doing a 46 tooth just to give a little more range. So what they've done is they've made tighter gearing at the high end, and then uh, at the uh, larger cogs, they've gone two teeth larger to help with that climbing. Uh, it kind of makes sense because you go from a 32 to a 38, that's a six tooth jump. Uh, before, it was another six teeth from 38 to 44. Uh, previously on their mountain bike versions, they've done this too, where it's usually six and then they do another two. So, so now we got six jump and then we jump to eight teeth. So we're going from 1046. Um, another thing too, is this the transmission style teeth uh, on there? If you don't, if you don't know what that is, essentially what they did with their um, their T-type cassettes is you can see here they actually made some of the teeth narrow wide okay the point of this is and i think i got another picture here yeah you can actually see them here so these are the wide teeth and then you got narrow 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 and it, and it does another wide the point of this is you can shift under load like you could be mashing 800 watts on the pedals and you can still shift under load it's not going to skip or anything of that nature uh, so it is going to be this narrow wide cassette like they have on their mountain bike 
I'm very interested to see if it still has the kind of slow shifting uh, that the T-type has. And the reason why it's slow, I'm kind of quotes there, but the reason why it's slow shifting is it has to make sure it's locking into each tooth as it goes through, uh, shifting through the gears. Um, so for example, uh, if you're mashing and if it's just going to shift super fast and you're mashing 800 watts or something of that nature, then it's going to mess up and, and basically break some teeth off. This shifts a little slower. Make sure that it locks into the, the next gear so you're not just you know going across all the cassette and breaking teeth. Uh, my opinion on the mountain bike, I don't like the idea of it being slower because on the mountain bike you do have uh, speeds change a lot quicker on the mountain bike. You're coming around a fast turn. Uh, you may come up on some kind of obstacle that you need to, to shift to an easier gear. Gravel, in my opinion, this is probably going to be a good thing because uh, then you can just keep pedaling on the on the roads and you can shift under load not have to worry about uh, soft pedaling or anything of that nature so i bet it will be a slow shift you know compared to just like the t-type um you know derailleurs before another thing i want to mention here about this is it appears to not have any kind of b screw adjustment uh if you looked at the t-type as well they have no b screw adjustments um you you set it up at the beginning uh with the chain length and it will take care of itself that's the goal i've seen some people have issues with the t-type rear derailleurs they say though if you follow the directions that sram give you then you won't have any issues with that now let's go to the chain here and it appears to be the same flat top chain as before zoomed in really close here you can see that it has red written on this chain it has the you know all the little pieces etched out of there to save as much weight as possible and also here you can see e1 which that's the uh the product number for the newest sram red group sets uh is e1 so it says red here and obviously e1 so it's using the same 12 speed chain as before uh you may be asking like how can they do that how can they just add another tooth well if you put up a big you know big cog and, and you're if you think about your spokes, your spokes, you know, you're looking at the wheel here, your spokes all go inward. The larger the cog you have, the more you can dish the cog inward toward the spokes. Uh, another thing too about T-Type, the mountain bike 12 speed, they were actually able to move the whole cassette and kind of sandwich it outward a few millimeters. So there's room there for another cog. Obviously the downside of this is you're gonna have more cross chaining whenever you go to the largest cog in the back. Um, so the, the major, downside of cross chaining is actually the chain bending and prying open to allow dirt and other debris into the chain which will later affect um, like your chain wear also it will cause more drag uh, that you have to go through there as well so yes there's pros and cons to one by systems we all know that uh, but you know for the simplicity of the system uh, you know i prefer one by um, for for gravel and mountain bike and also, too, another thing I like 1x4's frame design. Uh, it allows you to make a frame that's more lively. You don't have to worry about trying to make room for larger tires and also that front derailleur, but that's uh, that's for another video another time. Now, about, as far as everything else goes, uh, it's going to be the same things we've seen before. Uh, you know, it, All of the, the bikes on Unbound, they had the, the newest SRAM Red shifters. Uh, with the satellite buttons on them, the new brake calipers, which are really light. Um, the big question mark here for me is, is w what's the crank? You know, uh, it appears to be the same crank. The the red crank set that they, they came out with recently, which is mind-blowing that they actually made it lighter than the previous red crank because it was already light to begin with. Uh, I think they dropped like 30 grams on it. It'll be interesting to see if they have kind of an explore specific crank. My guess is if they do, it'll probably be a wide crank in red. Uh, I don't think they officially have like a wide red crank set. They got wide force, they got wide, um, you know, apex and, and rival, uh, but they don't have an official wide red. Now I've seen them before. I think they've actually spec them on a few pro bikes maybe and uh, some other bikes too. So there are some red wide cranks out there. And if you don't know what a wide crank is, all it is is the spindle is essentially, you know, five millimeter longer. Okay, and you can see it, it increases your Q, Q factor from a 145 to a 150. Your chain line basically increases two and a half uh, millimeter. So it's not much of a difference in chain line there. The whole point of this, once again, is you make more room for frame design and also more room for tire clearance. Okay, that's the whole point 
of having a wide crank. So it's not as wide as a mountain bike crank, uh, but it is wider than your normal road crank. So uh, what are your thoughts on this new group set? Uh, will you want to go out and get it? Or do you think this is just another marketing scheme, throwing more cogs in there to wear out the uh, gears and chains so that way you have to go buy more equipment? Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of this new Explore group set. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That helps me out tremendously. And we'll see you in the next video.